In the late 90s and early 2000s, there was no doubt that Ja Rule dominated the airwaves with his chart-topping hits and anthems. From energetic tracks like Holla Holla to soulful R&B collaborations with renowned singers such as Jennifer Lopez, Ashanti, and Christina Millian, Ja Rule seemed unstoppable. As an artist signed to Murder, Inc. Records, he soared to incredible heights, capturing the hearts of listeners around the world. However, just as his career reached its peak, a feud with fellow rapper 50 Cent escalated, resulting in catastrophic consequences for Ja Rule's career and personal life. In this video, we will dive into the series of events that unfolded that would change the trajectory of his success forever. The Rise and Fall of Ja Rule As with any career, Ja Rule's success couldn't last indefinitely. While his songs soared on radio charts, both in America and even across Africa, his fortunes took a downturn when the music recording label he was associated with, Murder, Inc. Records, encountered significant challenges. As the label faced troubles that led to its decline, Ja Rule's career suffered the consequences, ultimately being intertwined with the fate of the record label. The beef with 50 Cent, a turning point. However, the most significant blow to Ja Rule's career came as a result of his highly publicized feud with fellow rapper 50 Cent. In the world of hip-hop, feuds between artists have always been a part of the culture. But few have been as enduring and impactful as the ongoing beef between 50 Cent and Ja Rule. The feud between the two began over two decades ago in 1999, and since then, they have been at each other's throats. While their conflict simmered beneath the surface for years, it resurfaced once again at the beginning of last year, reigniting the intense rivalry that had defined their careers for so long. The feud took an unexpected turn when 50 Cent decided to play a prank on Ja Rule. In a bold move, he purchased 200 seats for $3,000 at a Ja Rule concert, with the intention of leaving them empty during the event. The prank attracted significant attention and created a buzz within the industry. Surprisingly, Ja Rule initially appeared to take the prank in stride, seemingly unfazed by the incident and appreciative of the financial compensation. After all, money is money, right? However, the initial amusement soon transformed into deep-seated anger, and things spiraled out of control, intensifying their feud beyond measure. A robbery and a club encounter. To understand the origin of their animosity, we need to travel back to 199, when Ja Rule was robbed at gunpoint in Queens, Southside, Jamaica. The assailants took his chain while he was filming a music video. Later, 50 Cent claimed that Ja Rule was furious when he spotted him in a club, accompanied by the man who had robbed him. In his 2005 biography, From Pieces to Wait, 50 Cent revealed that one of his friends had robbed Ja Rule, and a man named Brown took the chain back to him. On that fateful night at the club, Ja Rule noticed 50 Cent sitting with the person who had stolen from him. 50 Cent approached Ja Rule, intending to greet him, but Ja Rule chose to ignore him. 50 Cent defended himself, stating that he was not the one responsible for the robbery and questioned why Ja Rule held a grudge against him. Ja Rule acknowledged the robbery, but denied seeing 50 Cent with the person who had stolen from him. He claimed that 50 Cent was upset because the Murder, Inc. crew had ignored him during a video shoot for Ja Rule's song, Murder for Life. The Fallout, Losses, and Collateral Damage Unfortunately, the repercussions of the feud with 50 Cent extended far beyond a simple prank. Ja Rule not only lost the beef, but also saw his career plummet as a result. The negative publicity surrounding the ongoing rivalry severely impacted his public image and hindered his ability to secure prominent opportunities within the music industry. Moreover, the effects of the feud rippled through Ja Rule's personal and professional circles, affecting those connected to him, including artists like Ashanti, who had collaborated with him on successful tracks. The Infamous Studio Encounter a notable incident took place in March 2000 when Ja Rule and his crew received a tip-off that 50 Cent was at the Hit Factory Studios in NYC. Seizing the opportunity, Ja Rule and his entourage decided to pay an unexpected visit to the studio. Unfortunately, the encounter ended in turmoil, with 50 Cent reportedly being stabbed during the altercation. Ja Rule and fellow Murder, Inc. rapper Blackchild were subsequently arrested in connection with the crime. Black Child later confessed on record, citing self-defense as his motive. Interestingly, 50 Cent seemed to downplay the incident in subsequent interviews, choosing to ignore its significance. 
50 Cent's rise, and Wangsta. Following the altercation and subsequent legal proceedings, 50 Cent released his breakthrough hit single, Wangsta. The track arrived on the scene after 50 Cent signed a lucrative multi-million dollar contract with Shady Records in 2002. Collaborating with his group G-Unit, he also released a mixtape titled No Mercy, No Fear. Notably, 50 Cent attributed the inspiration for Wangsta to Ja Rule, openly acknowledging that he wrote the track as a response to Ja Rule's style. The single peaked at number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100, becoming 50 Cent's first major hit. Rumors and the Order of Protection Rumors circulated regarding an order of protection allegedly obtained by 50 Cent after the incident at the hit factory. These speculations arose from claims made by Irv Gotti, who suggested that 50 Cent had sought legal protection to prevent Ja Rule from getting too close. Gotti argued that this move was an attempt by 50 Cent to rebuild his street credibility. While it was later confirmed that an order of protection had indeed been issued, it was clarified that 50 Cent did not personally request it. Instead, the order was issued on his behalf as a procedural formality by the NYPD. In June 2018, Ja Rule publicly shared the order online and insulted 50 Cent by labeling him a rat. 50 Cent's Retaliation and Back Down In response to being labeled a snitch, 50 Cent retaliated with a scathing attack on Murder, Inc. through the G-Unit mixtape, The Future Is Now. He not only targeted Ja Rule but also directed his wrath towards Irv Gotti, Black Child, and Cadillac Ta, explicitly naming each one in a track titled I Smell Coward. The assault was unexpected and ruthless. 50 Cent then continued his offensive by releasing the track back down on his debut album, Get Rich or Die Tryin', which dropped on February 6, 2003. The album dominated the Billboard 200 chart, and Back Down featured lyrics that questioned the street credibility and authenticity of Ja Rule and Murder, Inc. Ja Rule's disrespectful diss track, Loose Change. Unwilling to let 50 Cent's insults slide, Ja Rule responded in April 2013 with what is widely considered one of the most disrespectful diss tracks in hip-hop history, Loose Change. In the track, Ja Rule took aim at not only 50 Cent, but also G-Unit. Dr. Dre, Eminem, Eminem's daughter Haley, Chris Lighty, and Busta Rhymes. The lyrics were scathing, with Ja Rule branding 50 Cent a snitch, Dre an asshole, alleging that those mentioned in the track enjoyed golden showers, and even labeling Eminem a crossdresser. Additionally, Ja Rule referred to Eminem's wife as a prostitute. This provocative move triggered a significant response from 50 Cent, Busta Rhymes, and Eminem, who collaborated on a diss track titled Hail Mary, targeting Ja Rule. Fans thought that Ja Rule's diss track, Loose Change, can never be defeated. But that was not the case, as 50 Cent, Eminem, and Busta Rhymes were able to come back with Hail Mary, which was a track that mocked Ja Rule as being obsessed with Tupac Shakur. This was a major defeat to Ja Rule, and it seemed that he had not speculated of the outcome of his move. But Ja Rule was not ready to give up in his fifth studio album that was released back in November 2013, which he made a remarkable transformation in style as he changed from his previous melodic rapping style to a more hardcore style. The album flopped as it failed to reach the success of his former multi-platinum albums. When having an interview with Hot 97 back in September 2013, Ja Rule admitted that he really thinks that he and the Murder, Inc. had been defeated by 50 Cent in 2014, 50 Cent headlined the Hot 97 Summer Jam Festival and didn't miss the opportunity to take shots at Murder, Inc. During his performance of the diss track, I Smell Puss, he used the stage as a platform to mock Ja Rule once again. When Ja Rule caught wind of 50 Cent's actions, he refrained from responding directly, suggesting that 50 Cent had an unhealthy obsession with him. Ja Rule released a memoir titled Unruly, The Highs and Lows of Becoming a Man. Within its pages, he recounted his rise to fame and the subsequent events that unfolded. In one chapter, Ja Rule claimed that 50 Cent had leaked information that led to a federal investigation targeting Murder, Inc. However, 50 Cent has consistently denied these allegations. Despite Ja Rule's assertion that the feud had come to an end at this point, 50 Cent continued to mock him whenever he saw fit. In 2015, a feud between Drake and Meek Mill captured the attention of fans with some drawing comparisons to the 50 Cent and Ja Rule beef. However, both 50 Cent and Ja Rule dismissed the comparison, 
stating that the younger stars had no connection to their long-standing feud. In 2018, Ja Rule responded to a 50 Cent interview by taking to Twitter, claiming that 50 Cent owed him his life. Ja Rule then tweeted a message asserting ownership over 50 Cent's soul, using provocative language. The feud took a surprising turn when 50 Cent revealed that he had purchased 200 tickets for Ja Rule's upcoming show in Las Vegas, with the intention of embarrassing him by leaving a significant number of seats empty. He shared a photoshopped image of himself amidst the vacant seats on Instagram, accompanied by an edited video showing Ja Rule performing before the empty venue. Unexpectedly, Ja Rule appeared amused by the prank, tweeting in response that he enjoyed getting under 50 Cent's skin. The feud between Ja Rule and 50 Cent resurfaced during a special episode of Saturday Night Live dedicated to remembering their infamous rivalry. Surprisingly, 50 Cent responded to an Instagram comment from Ja Rule, posting hash pull up and declaring that the beef was not over. He further stated that they may take breaks, but the feud will not end until one of them is dead. It seems that 50 Cent has grown tired of Ja Rule's comments on social media with Ja Rule claiming that 50 Cent blocked him on Twitter after their recent exchange of tweets. Despite the passage of time, it seems that neither artist is willing to let go of the animosity between them, ensuring that this ongoing rivalry will be remembered as one of the most enduring in the history of hip-hop, the Fire Festival fiasco and its aftermath. In early 2017, Ja Rule and his team organized an event known as the Fire Festival, which quickly turned into a disastrous debacle. Initially marketed as a luxurious music festival set to take place in the Bahamas, the event promised supermodels, tequila, opulent camping, performances by Blink-182, and an exploration of the untouched beauty of the Bahamian island. However, attendees were in for a rude awakening as the festival failed to materialize as promised. Instead, it was relocated to an alternative Bahamian island, leaving attendees shocked and disappointed. Upon arrival, attendees found themselves facing a chaotic scene of makeshift tents and a lack of basic amenities. Dehydration and confusion permeated the atmosphere, leading to an uproar that unfolded in real time on social media, attracting the attention of news outlets, bloggers, and journalists. While plans were made to feature the spectacle in Netflix and Hulu documentaries, those projects eventually fell through. Both Ja Rule and his co-founder, Billy McFarland, seem to place blame on Instagram users' inability to distinguish between what is genuine and what is not. Some journalists focused on the behavior of privileged attendees, highlighting their entitlement and self-centered attitudes. Surprisingly, Ja Rule managed to avoid significant backlash from fans and the enraged social media sphere, compared to McFarland, who faced severe consequences. McFarland was ultimately sentenced to six years in prison for fraud-related charges. Ja Rule publicly distanced himself from any responsibility for the festival's failure through a tweet. In a pre-incarceration interview with McFarland, Ja Rule expressed his belief that despite the Fire Festival's collapse, it had become one of the most influential pop cultural events of its time. He defended the festival as a remarkable concept, refusing to feel shame despite its disastrous outcome. However, the Fire Festival disaster resurfaced in 2019 when Ja Rule promoted his business venture, Value Tax, on social media. Critics seized the opportunity to mock him, leveraging the festival's failure to question his competency in handling other people's finances, particularly in the realm of tax preparation. It was revealed that Ja Rule had previously been convicted of tax evasion in 2011, and the tax-related issues continued to haunt him in the following year. Despite the Fire Festival being a significant setback for Ja Rule and the negative publicity surrounding his tax evasion conviction, he has remained active in the music industry. While the festival brought about substantial controversy and tarnished his reputation to some extent, Ja Rule continues to make appearances and engage with his fans, striving to move forward and rebuild his career. A career derailed and a legacy altered. The beef with 50 Cent had a profound impact on Ja Rule's career. While the feud raged on, Ja Rule's popularity waned, and his once thriving music career gradually diminished. The loss of the beef not only damaged his reputation, but also cast a shadow on his future endeavors. As the music industry moved forward, Ja Rule struggled to reclaim his former glory. Ja Rule's reign as the king of the airwaves may have come to an end, but his impact on the music industry cannot be denied. 
Despite the unfortunate turn of events and the ongoing feud with 50 Cent, Ja Rule's contributions to hip-hop during his prime remain significant. While he may not hold the same level of influence as he once did, his music continues to resonate with fans and leaves an indelible mark on the industry. In the volatile world of hip-hop, feuds and rivalries are inevitable. Some may escalate to dangerous levels, while others fade away with time. The ongoing beef between 50 Cent and Ja Rule stands as a testament to the enduring nature of certain conflicts. As fans eagerly await a resolution, the impact of this feud on the artists involved and the hip-hop landscape as a whole remains palpable.